Hello everyone and this is a fresh segment that I'm going to start. Uh, I'm, we're just going to talk generally about technology. Uh, today we are going to talk about networking technologies for ISPs. Uh, I'm going to cover a topic today that uh, I face a lot of questions on. That is, is the pure bandwidth, that is the transit bandwidth, better than peering? I know most of you might know the answer, but uh, there are few people who still don't understand this concept. So let's get started and understand about this. So before we get on the main topic, let's uh, understand what is a transit bandwidth and what is a peering bandwidth. So a transit bandwidth is a form of interconnection that ISP generally buy from telecom service providers like Airtel, Vodafone. And uh, this is the bandwidth with which uh, the ISP's customers uh, packets actually flow from so the ISP's customer connect with the ISP themselves and then uh, the uh, ISP connects to Airtel, Vodafone and that's how the internet flows for the customer. The next come is the pairing bandwidth. Now stop here. There is nothing as pairing bandwidth. What is there is pairing. Pairing uh, is a method of interconnection of two autonomous systems. So autonomous systems is an organization. So we have a ISP as an organization and uh, a TSP uh, such as ATL as an organization. So when they both interconnect with each other, they interconnect through peering. They peer with each other, each other. Now what is this peering all about? This is what I'm going to be explaining to you in this uh, video today. So let's look at what an ISP network looks like. Uh, this is the simplest form of the network. You have the internet where you have all your content like Google, Amazon, YouTube, etc. And you have your ISP router which connects to the internet. So this internet is basically the TSP connection that we were talking about earlier. Your Airtel, your Vodafone. Uh, then the ISP further connects it to a switch or some kind of distribution, something like OLTs nowadays FTTH is very common and then they further deliver it to the client premises through ONUs or uh, like ACT provides it directly to through an Ethernet cable that is a metro switching. So earlier on I said that there is nothing known as uh, peering bandwidth but there is something known as peering. I explained what is peering it is an interconnection of two autonomous systems where the IP packets don't have to go through a transit router. So if I have to go through to say something like Google or YouTube or say Netflix, I don't have to go through my TSP, I can go to them directly. So pairing is something that uh, we do with direct content providers. ATIL also we do pairing to uh, ATIL, Vodafone or other TSPs. In the simplest of terms, how does this pairing happen? Uh, a tier 1 wants to share their routes to another AS so what we need is both sides to have AS uh, we request uh, the other side to peer with us and if the other sides agree we exchange routes so why do we do peering we want to provide our customers benefit of uh, directly reaching to the content provider uh, content providers are your YouTubes, your Prime Videos, your Amazons, your uh, Netflix. Uh, if you are going through multiple routes, the connection is going to be slow. It's going to lag. Customer is going to request for a video. It will come for 10 seconds, then it's going to buffer. So we don't want that for our customers. We want the videos to stream beautifully on 4K nowadays or say 1080p, which some people might do. So we want to provide our customers with something uh, of a robust uh, connectivity so of course when uh, you peer to a, a content provider there are some policies that you have to adhere to uh, then only they will give you these resources and uh, how do we peer well we peer through BGP why BGP that's the question what is this BGP why we cannot peer through static routes or use OSPF, which is much more simpler. Uh, but the question keeps on coming is, peering bandwidth is poor. Why should I peer when the peering bandwidth is poor? 
and should I pay directly or through an exchange? We'll answer each of these questions step by step so you understand more what is, uh, what is pairing, what is transit bandwidth and uh, how should you actually pair. So let's get straight right into it and explain what is BGP. BGP is a border gateway protocol. Uh, it's a routing protocol where uh, both the sites exchange routes dynamically. It works on a TCP connection, unlike your uh, OSPF and EIGRP, which works on your multicast network. In BGP, you can establish connections which are more than one hop away, unlike in OSPF and all, where you can only establish a connection which is next hop uh, because they are working on multicast. Uh, the main reason that we use BGP uh, is the last point. Uh, as of 2020, there are more than 820,000 routes, prefixes that are being advertised all over the internet. And BGP is a scalable protocol. Uh, why is that? We'll just understand it in a bit when we compare it to uh, the other IGP protocols like uh, OSPF. Uh, but how do we establish BGP? Uh, there are certain attributes in BGP uh, which are needed for uh, establishing a connection. These are router IDs. Uh, this is usually represented as an IP4 address. Uh, ASN, an autonomous system number. This autonomous system number you get from your registrar of the same place that you get your IP addresses from. So if you are in Asia, you get it from APNIC. Uh, so if you are in uh, Europe, you get it from RIPE. Uh, then you need is peer address that is the address of the other party that you're going to connect to and their ASN. Uh, there's a point to note here that unlike OSPF where all the routers are in your control and you can establish a connection uh, between all of them without any external intervention that is any third party involvement. BGP you cannot establish an arbitrary connection. You need the other party also the, which is the third party which is not in your control to establish a counter configuration of the BGP in their routers, otherwise BGP doesn't get established. So the question earlier, one of the question was why we cannot establish uh, an as 2 s connection through static routes and OSPF. It will be much more easier for us to manage. BGP is a very complex subject. We need to study it and all. So the only answer I'm going to give on this is Static routing and OSPF is not scalable. Ha, if you have you ever tried entering 820,000 routes manually? Okay, so you can do scripting and you can enter it. But what if you have to change even 10% of those routes and you want to route it through some other network? What are you going to do? You're going to change all those 82,000 odd routes manually? It's simply not scalable. Uh, OSPF is again same problem it's not scalable if you have like more than even 4000 or 5000 or it's going to take a lot of CPU processing BGP also takes a lot of CPU processing but it is nothing as compared to what OSPF and all are plus with BGP you can do route manipulations uh, with the uh, AS, uh, AS path attributes uh, I'm not going to go into much details in this video but I'm going to follow up this within another video uh, which uh, details about BGP so you'll understand more what about uh, route manipulations and all in that but the question is why should I peer the simplest of the answers that I gave you earlier in the video is that we want to give our connect uh, customers best of the uh, connectivity if you're not pairing something like Yahoo uh, there is no pairing available right now so the packet travels all the way to US and back so there is a latency of about 300 odd MS and compared to a uh, Google, Google uh, because there is a local pairing available, there is a local server here in the country. The packet travels for only 50 ms or 40 ms, and the page is open quickly. Uh, the customers are happy with that. Internet is all peered. You have to understand that peering is nothing like that. You only peer to your content provider. Peering is something that you do with your uh, TSP also. So you connect to your TSP like Airtel, the Airtel is further connected to Google, they are connected to other TSPs like TCL, then they are connected to somewhere in Singapore with Singtel, and it goes on and on and on. If you see the uh, actual BGP connections between these ASs, 
it's a very very complex uh, bgp connections which are happening it's a very very complex network which has been formed over all over the world so peering is something of a bgp concept it is not something that you just do with the content provider it is something that you do with your transit providers also you peer through bgp so if you're going to still say that peering bandwidth is poor uh, i seriously have no other answer to this this is just a misconception that you have peering is a bgp concept again you peer with your bgp neighbor to establish a connection get their routes that's it that all that is there uh, if you still think that peering bandwidth is poor uh, i mean you need to go back to the start of the video and start seeing the whole stuff again so now we understand that the peering bandwidth is nothing but we need peer we need basically a content peering uh, so if you need content peering how should i go about it and whom should i peer with so you again you peer with your content providers like google netflix amazon akamai there are many other content players nch uh, there is a uh, some new content plays uh, coming every day microsoft apple these are not new these are old but there are new content providers coming every day who have a lot of content people are consuming that content so uh, they want to uh, be near to the customer so they can be only that near they approach isps or isps approach them and they provide a transit for their customers from there uh each content provider if you go to them directly they have their own uh, rules or regulations or uh, you could say a minimum requirement that they will content to uh, they will connect to so you need to approach each of the content providers individually to understand what are their requirements uh, why uh, why and how they're going to uh, peer with you uh, what i would suggest is before you go to any content provider you register yourself on peeringdb.com uh because that's the place that they will see your what your network is and how they are going to you know uh peer with you the other option is if you don't want to go to them directly you can go through an exchange so if you were to go directly to a content provider and uh, peer with them that's possible but uh, what you'll need to do is that uh you need uh, some space in a data center where all the content providers are available uh, you'll need to put up a switch or a router there uh, in this particular diagram i've put up a switch but uh, this is what something that we had done uh, back in the day and uh, from there you can have a dark fiber from the data center to uh, the location from where you are providing the internet to the customers uh, each of the uh, ports that you connect with the content providers with so supposing like if you are connecting to akamai through your switch uh, you'll need to pay port charges interconnection charges inside the dc uh, so separate charges for akamai separate charges for google separate charges for amazon you need to take into this uh, into consideration uh, if you are planning to peer directly this is how you peer through an exchange uh, with an exchange uh, you don't have to a uh, per se place a uh, switch at the data center you can avoid doing that but some people do place a switch in this particular slide uh, of the network diagram if you see i have not placed any switch uh, i am using the peering uh, provider or the uh, exchange here who has already placed the infrastructure there and i'm just taking a dark fiber and i'm just peering uh, an interconnection charge from just the data center Uh, so from the uh, exchange to the uh, dark fiber provider so only one port or one interconnection charge i'll be paying so there are some pros and cons uh, if you're going to go directly or if you're going through an exchange uh, but there are certainly some benefits if you're going through an exchange they are single stop shop uh, they'll they'll make sure that they have all the content providers that they can get so that they can keep pulling you back to them plus they will make sure of redundancy so they'll have multiple ports connecting to each of the content providers so in case one port of the content provider goes down the other port goes up uh, if you were to go and uh, you were to have multiple redundancy ports like that you will be paying much higher charges it's all about economies of scale so more people connecting there 
lesser the charges are going to be for everyone else. Most of the people will not agree to this, but this is the truth. And at the end of the day, it's all about customer experience. So if many ISPs are connecting to a single exchange, uh, they're in turn uh, redistributing each of their uh, BGP connections or their prefixes to each other. So the content of uh, one of the ISPs can be consumed by the other ISPs customers. This can happen. Uh, I don't have data per se right now to show you this, but uh, this does happen. ISP business is all related to customer experience. So better the customer experience is going to be, the better the ISP's uh, retention of the customer is going to be because nowadays the pricing is so low that uh, attrition is becoming a problem. Uh, customers lost by ISPs is a big headache. We need to keep on providing best of the experience to the customer. So uh, if you have not already peered, I would urge you to peer with the an exchange that will provide a customer with a better experience. Uh, I cannot advertise the exchange to you per se. Uh, this video is not being uh, promoted by anyone. So I'm not going to be uh, promoting any particular exchange. Uh, but if you need some contacts, you can uh, contact me through comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that uh, you got some knowledge with this. Uh, I'll be doing a follow up video uh, for all the routing protocols like static routing. OSPF and BGP in detail uh, in coming weeks so that you understand uh, how these protocols actually work and you're just not able to just configure it but actually understand how these protocols work and how you're able to manage them on your own you don't need an outside help uh, do subscribe to the channels to get the updates on the latest videos take care thank you and stay safe